Baltimore Ravens 31, Arizona Cardinals 24. Cardinals cover. Not a bad week for the picks here. They did cover. Because of the Cardinals backdoor covering like they do. Um, another game that was, you know, pretty close for a while. And then the uh, the better team pulled away, the Ravens. But they got up they got up 24-7 and then 31-15. to And then, you know, Cardinals kept clawing back and scoring points. Just what they do. To cover. Yeah, strange game where both quarterbacks, I think, decided to ignore what they'd been doing previously. Like Lamar Jackson had been playing like MVP, as good as any quarterback in the NFL, absolutely cooking. He didn't have a good game in this one. Uh, and then Josh Dobbs had been playing pretty good uh, and crucially hadn't really been making too many like really bad decisions. And then in this game made multiple awful, awful decisions, like ridiculous turnovers. I mean, first interception at seven, it's like seven, seven, like tie game, one score each. He just overshoots Michael Wilson by a mile and throws it right to the the like deep corner who was nowhere near the play should have been an easy completion ends up being just a terrible turnover uh has a bad fumble on a strip sack from michael pierce like giant nose tackle coming up the middle it's like uh our guy ross tucker was talking pierce up the entire game yeah yeah uh that backed them up a mile took them out of field goal range in addition to the tur- the fumble um and then the the other interception is like a ridiculous toss in a double coverage where both DBs were in a better position to catch that than the whoever the hell he was targeting with it in the first place. The underneath guy ends up catching it. All that did was stop the second guy from catching it. Just a terrible decision that he hasn't been making generally this season. So, yeah, strange game where both quarterbacks were way off where their baseline has been this year. Another strange one was uh, Odell Beckham finishing with zero catches on four official targets, but there were really seven targets, three of them, because three of them ended up with in uh, penalties, defensive pass interference. Mm. So uh, Odell Beckham targets, and I'm not saying he earned all of these necessarily, ended up in gains of 26, 40, and 22 on pass interference penalties. And, of course, we like to make this a story. He was visibly frustrated after the game yeah. or during the game, which, you know, <laughs> players – tend to do when they don't, you know, make the catches or do the thing that they're that they're paid to do. It doesn't mean he had a bad game or anything. He was drawing some of these penalties, but uh, Odell Beckham look, looking a little frustrated with no catches on the official stat line. He also took like a flying hip check at one point. Yeah, he looked, yeah, he was hurting. For he was point. out what they call, they call it like a, it was like an abdominal contusion or something. Oh. It was a contusion to something that wasn't you know, a normal place you get a contusion. I thought you were going to say hip pointer. No. No, because it wasn't course. his hip. It was Buda Baker's hip oh, launching right. itself yeah. at uh, Odell Beckham. It was a weird play where it was like an overthrown play down the side, a pass down the sideline intended for OBJ. Uh, Baker's coming across in the safety position and, like, cleans him out. And initially you're thinking, well, that's, you know, hit on a defenseless receiver, et cetera. But Baker was, like, going for the ball. So the ball sort of flying past both of them. Baker goes up to try and intercept the pass or at least break it up and then realizes like in the air uh oh it's going beyond me I can't catch it anymore but then also uh oh I'm airborne and have zero control of where I'm landing at this point so just sort of tries to turn you know either brace for contact himself or like minimize what he's about to hit and it turns out what he's about to hit is Odell Beckham coming down the sideline in a forlorn attempt to go chase the ball and just like literally flying hip checks him uh, and cleans him out, and that knocks him out of the game for a while. He comes back later and still doesn't do anything. Yeah, so just something to keep an eye on there. I mean, the, the Ravens still have all these pieces. You know, last week they they hit, man. Last week was against the Lions where everything was working great, and it, it was like, all right, this was what the Ravens' offense is capable. Lamar Jackson was wheeling and dealing and doing it within structure, outside of structure. As you said earlier, it just wasn't there this game. Really nice touchdown. I mean, uh sidearm flash points or whatever you want to call it for the Mark Andrews touchdown. That was pretty sweet. Um, but like when Lamar did try to scramble around a couple times, he got bottled up for a sack. I mean, there was just some of those big plays that weren't there from, from last week. From an Arizona perspective, here's what's happening now. They're now 1-7 and seven and in line for the number one overall pick, what people thought was going to happen mm-hmm. earlier in the year. So just because they cover – 
and they're feisty doesn't mean they're winning games. They're one and seven and in line for the number one overall pick at the moment over the Carolina Panthers, a.k.a. the Bears. <laughs> but also Kyler Murray is cleared to play football. Yeah. So he's been cleared. He obviously didn't play in this game. He's only had five practices this year and in this new offense. I think we're probably going to see Kyler Murray next week, but it comes back to another fascinating decision here for the Cardinals with the number one pick on the line. They also get to kind of evaluate Kyler Murray in their new system. And, you know, maybe they say, hey, he's going to be our guy. Plus, we'd love to add a Marvin Harrison Jr. or whatever it might be. So looks like Kyler might be back as soon as next week. Yeah. I mean, the, they need to figure out what Kyler Murray is in this offense, in this team, because the people running the show now are not the people that committed to Kyler Murray twice. Uh, so they, they're in a strange spot where normally you would be like, well, we don't let's keep him on the bench as long as possible because we want that number one overall pick and we want our choice of Caleb Williams or Drake May or whatever. But first of all, they need to figure out if they even want one of those quarterbacks or if they're happy with the guy they have because the people making that call now are not the people that were there before and you probably don't want to make that decision based off like old evidence, right? Pre-injury Kyler Murray running a different offense is probably not giving you the best indication of whether that's true or not. All right, man. Uh, as the uh, as we said, Ravens first place. They're six and two in the AFC North. Finally, a big Trey McBride game, oh, which yeah. I've been waiting for for kind of a while. Uh, Fourteen targets, which was almost double anybody else in the team. Ten catches, ninety-five yards, a touchdown, a full-on rugby mall touchdown. They get him down to like the two-yard line. He's fighting, struggling, and then it literally like stalls out. And then just a whole bunch of people get added to the pile and push it like two yards over for a touchdown. Could not believe the officials didn't blow it up for stopping forward progress. Like that would have been the ref in rugby would have given them a warning that the mall has been stopped. Right. That's once. Got, use it. Who else got really mad about forward progress being called? Somebody was moving backwards by about two yards, but not for that long, and then yeah. it broke free. And this one, it was not like, this game, but it, this one, it was the duration, like the length of time that was stopped yeah. for, was amazing that they didn't blow it up for lack like, for forward crop progress being stopped. Like I said, if the if the mall had been stopped for that length of time in rugby, they would the ref would be giving a warning that like now you got to use the ball, and yet they pile in and push him over the line for a touchdown.